Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. Okay, it's Capital Audio Fest 2024, and uh, we're here, and it seems like it was just yesterday that we were here, but it wasn't. Hi there. And here is the full list of the rooms, and what's going on here at the show. I'm just going to walk through here for a second. First famous person I've seen. And then, who's that? <laughs> oh, me. Okay. All right. Enjoy the show. I came to pick up my badge, and uh, last year there wasn't a badge, so they had a right one for me. So this year, they made three badges just to make sure I have a badge, and somebody came along and took my badge. They just they just took it. So there are three people running around the show with my badge, and they're going to use it to get all kinds of special deals and, and to get into room, room access and take advantage of being me, but they don't understand how bad being me can possibly be. Okay, I'm going to keep walking around. I'll come back later for a badge, and I know that it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, we're in the VPI section. You raise my hopes and you raise the odds. You tell me that I've been too much for a certain time. And I'm just a great love. I don't believe you anymore. This is the new Model 1 VPI. It looks like they really uh, hit every, every good mark on this turntable. So Matt, so this is your new Model 1, which I, I put up with it on the website showing a picture of it. So tell me, tell me about it. Yeah, well thanks Michael for coming in. And uh, so with this, this is our new VPI Forever turntable. This is um, a true hat tip to our, our heritage and history, I guess you could say, while still pushing forward the new technology and engineering. I want to first focus on, because I feel like this is the big deal of, as far as being a huge departure. It is. Yeah, because for the past uh, 20 plus years, we've been doing a straight arm unipivot tone arm. That's right. Now there's no takeaway from that. That is a fantastic type of design right. and has its own sound. But we have found with using more gimbals that from a usability standpoint, the gimbal is just easier to deal with, yes. easier to use, so much easier to set up. And there's been a huge gap, in my humble opinion, since Jelco left the industry and amongst whole other things and whatnot. So without getting too much into that, this covers a very familiar math and whatnot, um, and, but it's not an arm tube. This is what kind of sets it out apart. This is literally just a block of aluminum that we cut because that was the problem we we're trying to have, getting the bend. So like, well, let's not bend it. Let's just cut the whole thing. Yeah. Then underneath, instead of it being a tube, it's just a, a trench cut right from the bottom so the wire can go right through. So no grounding issues, no problems. It just goes right through with it. Right. The back stock is a fine thread. Actually, the production is going to be finer than this even um, with the adjustable counterweight. Adjustable azimuth right here at the head shell. Now, the initial model is not going to have a removable head shell. Uh, part of that is just because, well, realistically, this is our first S-tone arm. Right. And this is going to be the first of all the models. So, um, But the future tone arms will be having a removable head shell. Okay. And so we've been working on that there. And so they can replace the arm with, and get the removable head shell version if they wanted it. Exactly. Now, I know that that's one of those things, I'm sure you've heard that, which is better. And, you know, I just feel at this point, whatever makes your life easier for your own listening experience, that's what's better. Some people are going to prefer this. Some people right. are going to prefer a removable right. head and shell. And so azimuth, you would, you would adjust here? Correct. So right now you'd adjust it with this set screw. You can make the turn. And we you, have that machined in, so that's theoretically straight. That's perfect. You know, okay. so then you're good. And you know what? Mike, not to give you a feather in your cap, but some of the stuff we did, because you've you know, you poked us about it, so there it is as far as this being our 10, um, having that little line there, so you have a bit of a gauge of what straight should be. Right. So all these little things just to help on is setup. Is there anti-skating on this one? Yes, uh, we missed it as far as getting in time for the show, but there will be a little armature out here with a weight that's coming out, Excellent. Uh, similar to what we've done with some of our other models yeah. in the past. Okay. Uh, the arm board is removable and is on the same math as our uh, former HW19, so theoretically Theoretically, well, actually, theoretically, this would be probably in the same scale of a super arm yeah. board, and you could take this entire arm board, tone arm and all, and drop it on an old vintage HW19. We felt those were important to just honor but our now, customers. Now, it is hardwired from here to to the to the plug. Uh, well, there is a connection, so you can loosen up uh, the uh, uh, the six screws, pick it up, disconnect it, and then lift it right off. Oh, okay. So the idea is, and with the Forever series, there's a ten year warranty. So that's we're we're, we're doubling down on this because if you have a problem with your tone arm, the goal is to just send you another arm box, 
to put the new one in, put the old one right. back, send it on back. Yep. Now, this is our platter and motor module where we have all this on this side. Uh, and of course, everything's rebranded as forever. And again, a bit of a hat tip to the old of having our motor cover with our VPI Forever logo over there. Yep. Um, we made some changes. The original things had a different nub, but we wanted to have uh, these thumb screws be easier to remove and put it on and have it as an option. You want the cover? Great. You don't, you're fine there. Um, over here, a bit of an aesthetic to both uh, showcase the button and leave it open for future upgrades because it's already planned. Right. Now, the actual chassis itself is a wood skirt with our Forever Feet, formerly HW40 feet. Right. All they're coming together. And then I've got this guy over here, which is the actual sub-chassis. Wow. So the sub-chassis, well, this whole top piece is machined aluminum, um, and then it's got this wrinkled uh, finish, but the sub-chassis, which it goes right Many on. Many of it has a wrinkled finish at this point in time. That's right, that's right. Okay. You know, I'm starting to get that too after having three kids. Right. So. We've got the uh, the three mounting holes, which uh, connects with the rubber isolators, uh, which you can use to then level off the turntable, and then it just makes it completely dead quiet. Now over here, we've got two cuts over here. We have this for the rigidity, but if you somehow have a linear tracking arm that's still functional, you can drop it on here, or if you know someone that can repair it, you're good to go. Yeah. Um, and so making it so that the motor and the platter are completely separated from each other. Um, and again, the nice little stock machine aluminum to make it work from there. And from the module standpoint, it's being launched in black. Actually, everything you're seeing here is how it's going to be launched. Uh, but if in the future, different finishes, different upgrades, or whatever it might be, we're trying to be just like the HW19. Suspe suspended, not suspended? Yes, yes. So it's, it, it has its suspension, and then so it's... Uh, uh, oh, you're, I see. You're, so, yep. so what's connected together is the arm board and the platter itself. Correct. Okay. Yep. So, and that's all the stuff with the Forever. Um, we're showcasing it with both our Shyla cartridge here on the right, okay. and then the Goldie on the other, and having it just being able to be a plug-and-play situation. Be a less expensive model called called the Last for some time, a limited time model. In, in, incidentally, <laughs> uh, there there are future thoughts for that also, which uh, I no, think no, you'll no, get no, a no. kick out of. But uh, uh, so then the next goal is to launch the Model Two sometime mid next year, with potentially launching the Model Three possibly at this Those show. Are up, up or down? Up. We're going up with it. Okay. Um, so, so this. this is Guy. Be your basic yes. Model. So this is the basic at five thousand two hundred and fifty dollars with right. a hinge dust cover. Okay. So we're going to include the hinge dust cover also because I just want to do this right. Yeah. I want to have a solid full deck where you can purchase it with or without the tone arm. I feel that there are too many people that get too up in arms about it must be no this arm. Intended. That's right. That's right. Up and up. <laughs> you know, but tone arms are so subjective. That's right. You know, I mean, like I, you know, I still think that if it's a end of the world situation, I probably would still go for a Unipivot. But I use a gimbal every day because I've got kids, yeah. and it's just easier to deal with. But what's, what's great is that you can buy it and put your own arm on it. That's yes. fine. Make Give it the option. Yeah, Absolutely. and so if you order it without, uh, once we have that available, the initial run's going to be getting all of this out, hopefully for mid-December to end December. By January, we want to have it both available with and without the arm. We can get it with a blank arm board, uh, but for a bit of additional cost and the measurements, we'll match your arm for you. Um, what, would, yeah. what would it cost without uh, without an arm? Um, ballpark, um, I'm going to say in the high threes to Early four, oh, really? like, oh, like, that's you know, good. Um, four thousand. Let's say four thousand. So, so then, so if somebody already owns an arm, they're getting in exactly. at, a, at a very attractive price. Yes, for something that seems. And seems then the arm itself. And what, and what yes. about the, the uh, platter bearing? Is it inverted ball? Yes. So this is inverted bearing. Uh, th this is very similar to everything we've done since our classic yeah. from back in the day. Yep. It's just been tried and true. We've gotten better with it because of just uh, like um, you else, know right. exactly. And then the tone arm will be available on its own. Uh, target oh. price point is two thousand dollars. Okay, that's great. And and the goal is to be an, a solution for other turntable manufacturers. So yep. let this be a call, call to arms to anyone out there looking no for a tone arm. Again, no that's right. Again. I just keep doing okay, that. And man. that's it, right? Absolutely. Uh, and then, of, um, yeah, no, actually in here, that's all the, the new stuff we have here. Okay. And we're just really excited to have you here. As you should be. I think this is a real... Uh, how long has this been in, in, in gestation? Since the beginning of COVID, um, it was not like this. The original thought process of this was everything you see here minus the arm board. Uh, last year, I had an opportunity. Oh, my God, about two years ago, time flies with kids. Uh, I was messing around with an old HW19, just having yeah. fun. And literally, that's what threw me off guard. And, and I was enjoying it. It's kind of old school to have these these 
bolts on here, and they're going to yep. be, it's going to be there. Just like that. And it's going to be there. Yes. It's going to be that way. That was part of the design. Yeah. Someone had commented, and to me, I feel like it has that feel of an old, like, you know, uh, uh, American muscle car to an yeah, extent. exactly. And a little bit to um, uh, 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 another hat tip to some of the design cues of the past. And yep. uh, I, I just like it. And, uh, you know, nice and easy in general, and uh, being like able it. to put and different what, things what on. What brand of wire are you using in the toner? Uh, at the Harness? current moment, it's a, a standard copper VPI wire. Okay. Uh, now, the future ones, Model 2 and 3, it's up in the air. Potential. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, we love Cardus. We love Nordus. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, open-ended to to an extent now. But actually, what I'm really hoping to do is eventually be able to offer a solution of any wire. Yeah. Um, maybe you just like your Cardus wire. Yeah. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Nordus. We're we're a fan of all of them. Cool. Just whatever we can do to help connect the end user with the listening experience right. that they want, and not what I think you want. Right. Cool, Matt. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for coming down, Michael. Of course. So I just uh, saw your turntable in Warsaw. Two and weeks here ago. we are at Cap Audio Fest, and you're here. Yes, yes. And your turntable is here for, for the first time. That's amazing, yes. Uh, I found that, you know, uh, the distribution here, it's uh, Supreme Acoustic Systems. So we've been working for a while. We started in May, and now we have two turntables here in the U.S. It's the first time my turntable are uh, on this kind of shows in the U.S. Is this the Odyssey here? Though? This is the Odyssey, yeah. The same model that you've seen in Warsaw yeah. two weeks ago. And I have the other model working, operating in another room. And so what is this going to sell for here now? It's $36,000 with uh, one arm, 44000 with two arms. Right. You can hold, you can hold up to three arms if you yeah. want. All right. That's good. And how does the sound here? Sound the same as it sounds over there? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of crazy because it's the first time I hear the YG Acoustics uh, Oh really? Oh, yeah, yeah they're, it's a very they're first real time, nice. and I'm really surprised by the sound. So it's your so it's your turntable. What cartridge is in there? Is that a, that is a, that it's is Hannah Umami Red? That's a Hannah Hanna Red. Yep. Yeah, and uh, and we have the Solnut Electronics all the way. Yeah, and uh, so you know what? We should listen to something, and if it doesn't sound good, there's a serious problem. Oh, so yeah. I know what, given what's here, <laughs> it should sound. And can I play my record? Yeah, sure. Okay, good. The SATXD1 uh, record player system. CF109 uh, pickup arm. I believe you're familiar with the Is that the TI or the regular one? It is the T. Well, that's how dare you call it regular, but it is not the titanium TI version. It's not? No, it's not. It's the CF109. So this is the low, the, the low rent version. The low rent $71,100 retail 9 inch version wow. of the arm that you have, which yes. is the CF112. 12, 12, 12 inch yes, version of that. Which I'm waiting for a spacer, and then I'll be able to yeah. install it on the back of the turntable. Oh, so very cool. Stainless, stainless steel spacer, that. and I look forward to it too. Yeah, and of course, Lyra. Atlas uh, phono cartridge, which is uh, providing yep. a wonderful sound. We've got Kevin Hayes' amazing. So, what does this combo cost right here? Can you buy this combo with? with you can we buy. We will it? sell it to you. That is absolutely correct. And how so much would you be willing to pay? Cash too. Just kidding. How, how, so, what, what would it sell for to a consumer? A show special. Let's see. Just, just right around, right around three hundred thousand okay. dollars. For the combo. Okay. But bear in mind that if somebody buys the XD1 and an arm, the TI version is basically put on at the same price. Oh. So you get the upgraded version with the titanium arm tube inside the carbon fiber I see. arm tube. Okay. Yeah. What else, what's going on? Anything new here from VAC that you know of? Not that I know of, but Kevin Hayes would be a better person. He's outside. Statement line. And look how, look how beautiful this stuff. I mean, I'm... You know, kind of a gear hound myself. Oh, yeah. All into audio oh, his, stuff, his stuff is beautiful. It's cool. And the other thing is, Axpone was the first time I got to spend extended time with it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Do I have so much respect for how this stuff sounds? Yeah. It's, i got to get some to review. I did the big amps a couple of years ago. All right, we are at Pacific Audio Fest covering turntables at the show for the tracking angle. I'm Michael Trahalakis, and I'm here with John Stratton of Pure Fidelity. Hi, John. Hi, how are you? Good. How's Good. the show going so far? It's been going great. We're great. De debuting a new model here today, and uh, um, yesterday's response on it was, was awesome, so we're pretty excited about that. And I understand you have a new tone arm you designed yourself on this new turntable? We do. Uh, design itself might be a bit of a stretch. We, we've made some significant changes to an existing model, but it's it's a it's a great tournament. It's called the Savant. The Savant, uh, and it's a it's our first table that accommodates a 12 inch tone arm, and and we've chose titanium for the arm tube. So it's a great sounding tone arm. So I, I'm and excited. About what it. cartridge are you running on it today? We, we're actually running an Ikeda cartridge um, called the Kai. 
it's a very nice cartridge um very low output but it's 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 a it's a fantastic cartridge. great yeah. so you have the new turntable here that we'll look at in just a minute and yeah. then you have some other models on display also yeah, I'll, I'll show you let's come over and take a look at what else you have these are other other uh two models the c3 but um this is this is our eclipse model eclipse and encore basically one of the same um, we have our E-series and we have our H-series. This is the Eclipse and the Encore. They're basically priced the same. The only real difference is the aesthetics of them. I, I brought this one just to show the um, people that we actually do. We don't put it on our website. We actually do custom finishes. Um, this is this is our quilted maple right beside our regular quilted maple. It's done instead of a burgundy color. And this also showing our new acrylic platters. That's a, a brand new thing for us. We think it's a really cool look, especially with some of the brighter colors and stuff. It's it's fun. Are you pleased with uh, solid MDF? There, yeah, we use an Ultra MDF core. Okay. Um, and then, you know, veneer the top and the bottom. You know, it's funny, people ask all the time, why don't you use just solid wood? And I said, well, to tell you the truth, solid wood would be a lot cheaper with all the steps we have. But Ultra MDF is super, super stable. And if you use, you know, solid wood, you, you get twisting and torquing uh -huh. and shrinking and expanding depending on the time of year and stuff so it just it just wouldn't work because all our tables are built on really really tight tolerances uh -huh. and stuff so you look at here like you've got you know just a, a tiny 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 gap and if we had done that in real wood i mean there'd be some days where it literally wouldn't spin uh -huh. <laughs> So, so this is the acrylic, and then this looks like this, Delrin. This is Delrin. Yeah. I'm guessing that's, Delrin. That's, that's our standard thing. It, it's a it's a great material for for platters. Um, and what arm do you have on this turntable this here? This is the Origin Live Zephyr. Um, I'm sure people have heard about the Origin Live Silver. That's kind of where they where they got really set the world on fire. Okay. Um, the Zephyr is sort of a turbocharged silver. For instance, it's it's our starting level, but that's, don't be confused, that's still a very, very good tone arm. And so this is our Encore model, and, and that's a standard quilted maple finish. You know, it's not the burgundy. And then uh, this is our Harmony model. This, we have a, a model called the Harmony and also have our Horizon. That's part of our, what we call our H series. Um, and what arm do you have on this one? This is, this is, uh, the Savant. It's made for us by Audio Origami in Scotland. Okay. It's, a, it's a great arm. It starts its life as a PU7, which is it's got a it's got a huge following in the UK. It's commonly used on the LP12s and stuff. I've always really admired this arm, and we just they we approached them and, and they agreed to build some arms. Of course, we made some changes. We do our own head shell and. Our counterweights different. Um, the counterweight's an interesting thing. It's it's a threaded counterweight. They're not that that's really that unique. But what we do is we insert an O-ring inside it. So I see that. Yeah. yeah. So I don't mind changing it for because, vibration. No, just because. So you get this really deliberate sort of turn. So when you're dialing in the, the weight, you can make these little micro adjustments and then you're done. You don't have to go back and set it with a, mm -hmm. a set screw and then gotcha. you go, oh shoot, it moved again. Gotcha, and gotcha, gotcha. So it's, 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 a, it's a great solution. Do all three have the same motor? They all have the same motor. They all have the same speed controller um, called the conductor. Um, what does your motor spin at? What do you mean? Like uh, what, is what it like oh, 300, 300 RPM? I mean, I know it's 33.5, yeah, it's, but... It's, it's, two, it's 250 RPM. 250 RPM. Sorry, okay. I, I great. misunderstood. No right. problem. Um, so we, we don't offer 78. We just do 33 and 45. 45. Yeah, yeah. On it stuff, so, um, and do they all have the same sub chassis for the belt drive? They, they, they all run off a sub platter system, but um, the thicknesses of them will vary just like the platter thickness. So this one's got a much thicker sub platter than that model. Mm -hmm. And then w when we go to show you our new model, that's, that's even thicker again. So, and I'm hearing that we have basically an exclusive here. This is the first time you're ever showcasing this turntable, right, John? Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, this is our new model. Uh, we're calling it the Symphony. Um, you know, it, uh, just to give you a real quick little Cole's notes on the, on the, um, the thought process that went into this. W when I set out to set, uh, to make a flagship table, 
I looked at different ideas and I thought, you know, we could encapsulate the motor, have its own housing. We could look at different ways of isolating. We could, you know, just, you know, having the getting away from a true subplatter system and having the belt attached right to the platter. There was a bunch of ideas that we had, but in the end, we, we just came back to the same subplatter platter system that has worked so well on our Encore and Harmony models. So we decided to take that to, kind of to the to the max. So uh, the Symphony, we've, we've gone, instead of two inch MDF, we're now ultra MDF. We're now a three inch thick plinth. Uh, we've got a heavier isolation platform as well. Is that aluminum on the bottom? It's, it's aluminum, aluminum, all, all okay. CNC'd. Um, this table is actually floating on it. It looks like it's all part of it, but what you don't see is there's feet on the bottom of the plinth which s sit inside some CNC pockets. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a great solution for isolation. It just looks like a, it's part of the table. And then, of course, because of the additional weight, it now we now have five isoacoustic Gaia feet on the bottom. So it's 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 a incredibly silent turntable, um, which I think is very important these days with all the good digital players out there, streamers, CD players. I mean, people won't accept, you know, your turn. Well, you know, introducing sort of noise into the system. So mm -hmm. it's it's uh, we're really proud of that fact. I mean, and this, this is, is your the, first uh, twelve inch tone arm. It is. Too, yeah, right? this is our yeah. a new tone arm. It's the Savant, which we we do offer in a nine nine inch model on our other models. It's turned out to be a great tone arm for us, but we decided to go with the 12 inch. Um, the main difference between the, the nine and the 12, of course, other than the length, is the fact that we chose titanium for the arm tube. It's very, very, very stiff. Um, and it just, it's just, it's a great, uh, it's a great platform for a cartridge, which, you know, when you get into the really high end cartridges, the, the rigidity of the arm tube is really, really important. So, um, yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell. We're we're really excited about this table. Great. I'm really looking forward to hearing it a little bit here. Yeah. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Yep. Okay, crazy man. What's what? Show me what's you got in this room. All right, we have the audio vector trapeze reimagined. This is the original design from 40 years ago, reimagined with new drivers. And hence why we based our room on the 80s and why we do this throwback. Oh, I see. Hence, yes, hence my mullet and such, right? We also have only analog to make everything seem along with it. We have the classic Bell 99, Nick Doshi mono blocks, going to the Nick Doshi mono stage and line stage, all connected with our Cardis cabling with the brand new HRS rack that we have. And on top of oh, what is that a brand new model that they've got? Or well, this is their new model that they have that comes in completely assembled, which is one of the nice things when you have to take this out of the crate. There's not a lot of assembly that takes place, which I absolutely love. Oh, and yeah. On top of that table is what we have is our J Sakura. This is the 15th anniversary edition J Sakura. With those, we have two KV12 Max tone arms, two different cartridges on here. What we're currently listening to is the Adif Mammoth Tusk cartridge. Very, very special cartridge. This is a special edition, hence why it... Uh, hence why. Hence why it's hence called special because it's from the... <laughs> a unique part of the Mammoth Tusk. Okay. Um, the, from the Tusk itself. Is that related to Donald Tusk, <laughs> who's also from uh, Poland? No? No, unfortunately. This is actually a Lithuanian cartridge. Oh, okay. And then the other one, we have a uh, well, sorry, from the Aedis, we have the Lyra cartridge, the Etna. Yeah, I was going to say, this looks an awful lot like a uh, like a Lyra cartridge, and it is. Yes, it, it is. is a Lyra cartridge. You would, okay. You know exactly what it's saying. All right, and that's all. So how much does that rack cost, that new, new oil? Uh, I'm going to go first rack. I am 70, I can't remember. Yeah. Seven, around seven thousand dollars, seven, seven. seven thousand five hundred. Okay, and it comes assembled, so you just pop it open and, and you're ready to play. Yeah, and that's one of the beautiful things about it. I really do that. All right, does it have all the miraculous uh, isolation? Yeah, so HRS is known for the isolation. Yes. 
we also will figure out the weight distribution we need and get the appropriate isolation up okay. here. And can you can you add shelving to it? That's it. That's it. That's so you can add to oh. it. It's modular. Yeah. So you decide later on to add the different plate on top. Of okay. It. But the different series also each rack can be adjusted according to your gears. So right. Okay. Depends what type of rack you want to use okay. in their series. This particular one, the top can be adjusted. Okay. How do you avoid a, a gaggle of German tables? A gaggle. A gaggle. Uh, rock and roll. These are AMG. Any, anything new from AMG? Anything new here? This is uh, their entry level turntable, but this model is all decked out with all the bells and whistles, including the turbo tone arm, as well as this. This is what's really new: is this solid, uh, solid cherry wood base. It's not a skirt; it's a solid piece of cherry wood that adds 20% more mass. This is uh, all from the Franconia region of Germany, where these are made. They're sustainably sourced uh, wood. They work with a local carpenter, so this is a. Uh, the newest. And what does that sell for? As it is here, with the upgraded tone arm and the optional base, this is 17.5. Oh, that's not bad, really. And then this is a Viv Laboratory uh, rigid float tone arm, yep. Michael. It's zero offset. It's just freestanding. It has an oil floated bearing. If you ever want to take a look at one of these, I reviewed one of these. You did? Yes, I did. Okay, well, yeah. Anyways, uh, Mike tried to review it again, and uh, it's been reviewed a few times. I'm trying to get more people into this arm because it's so cool. Um, this I got a mono cartridge on there as well too, so we're doing mono here as well. Yep. Okay. And then this is the, the AMG flagship over here. This is the the AMG Forte. Right. Turns out it's a 12-inch arm. And what does that sell for these days? This is 32,000. Yeah. I like I like how compact it is. It's compact. Doesn't it's make a lot of space. It's more compact and more elegant than a lot of other high-end turntables. Yes. But uh, yeah, and then we're doing all Benz Micro cartridges here. This is a Benz Micro LPS here. And who's making these cartridges? He's still making. He, Benz Micro. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's okay. Yeah. He is. Oh, well, yeah. All these rumors that he he's retired or he's died or misinformation. Misinformation. Uh, no, uh, I just saw him earlier this year. And he's doing great. He's got his core staff still working with him in Switzerland. Oh, cool. He lives in his factory. He's a weird. guy. Yeah, he's a great, sweet guy. Yeah. Uh, he's dedicated to his craft. Uh, that's more good. Anybody I've ever met. Good. So yeah, he's not going okay. anywhere. And that's it. That's that's it enough for me. That's enough. Uh, if you're talking analog, that's that's, that's what I'm it. Talking. That's what I'm talking. Okay. Analog. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, of course. That's Thank it. you. What do we got going on here? Yeah. So we have the new uh, acoustic signature Verona Neo with a TA seven uh, seven thousand. And we're also using the top of the line MCX4 uh, cartridge, which I, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's an OEM cartridge from Ortofon. It uses a sapphire uh, cantilever, okay. and it has a, a Shibata uh, stylus right. tip. Tough to set up, and so and so this is this is it's it's their own cartridge. So it is their own cartridge, cartridge, exactly. So it's an entire front end or turntable system utilizing acoustic signatures, and it sounds very good. And then I have a oh well, sure it does, and this is called the um, Verona, Verona, Verona Verona Neo. Neo. Yes, exactly. Okay. And it's a, this is new here. When it, when did they release it? Yeah, they, it's new this year. Uh, it's uh -huh. been out um, for a couple months, but we had one of the very first ones that they shipped out to us so this is you know it's what, good. Is it, what does it cost i wouldn't be able to tell you a hundred percent but it's a it is a it's a considerable investment <laughs> it's a, uh, i could probably find it for you real quick here but i think twenty thousand. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's in that that zone yeah well know? these days you know yes yeah. i mean it's a it seems to weigh like Close to forty kilograms. I mean, it's a. Yeah, heavy, it looks so high, like a high mass. Yeah, thing, it's yeah. a very high mass turntable, and and as you say, it's uh, what I liked about it is it was easy to level. Yeah. And the um, it had a very interesting. The all the um, I believe it's a belt drive. It's all integrated That's into right, yeah. the sub chassis. Right. You don't uh, under, to, under that plate. Yeah. You yeah. don't need to. You don't actually see any right. visual belts. Sure. There, yeah. Right? I reviewed some of the bigger ones. Yeah. yeah. It's a cool and, design. Uh, That's really, good. really nice. You know, all mm -hmm. integrated. I just had to take two transit screws yep. out, put yep. the platter on, and then add this, and yep. then a calibrate. Yeah, I've been the to their factory. It's a pretty impressive place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
show me what you got here, Dr. Dr. So, Vinyl. So here we have the Peraldio Blue Arras turntable. Uh, it's uh, second time being played in the United States. Oh, what's, what's, the, the, what's it called? This is the Arras, A-R-A-S. And uh, it has a single motor like they do uh, with the low torque. So if you use it for uh, for DJ work, you say it's scratch your ass? Is that what it is? Scr that's scratch exactly, your ass. Exactly. Okay. The, uh, I'm sorry. It's uh, her ass, actually. It's, her, her ass, okay. Her ass. <laughs> This is definitely not, going not, the right not way. PC, but we're going to run it anyway because I don't really care. Yes. Right, what, and, and you got the and then, then you have the, the truck lighter arm, which is made in Canada. It's, it's, it's the one that's not supposed to work. It actually right. plays very good. And then you have the, true, the, the Grandmaster EX. Okay, that works. That works beautifully. And this has been really uh, enlightening, this new tube uh, stage from... from uh, it's DS, DS, right? Yeah. Yes. It's been really uh, incredible because it's they, twenty thousand dollars. Correct. They, I know. They, they told me they were, it was going to sound a way that it's not the way it's playing right now. I think it's beautifully transparent and it doesn't have any, you know, like to they me. told me exactly. They told me it was going to be tubey and I don't find it. Well, I'm sure it's a little bit more tubey than their solid state one because it's, why bother making it if it doesn't have a different sound? Okay. But I think I think they they tried to make this more tubey and they they weren't. Yeah. I'm happy that they weren't successful. Yeah. Well, twelve AU twelve AU seven should not sound too tubey. Correct. Correct. Okay, and then you got. So then you have the LTA. This is uh, human stuff. You know, this is. Uh, I'm gonna let Mark take over, but this is real components that that are not worth uh, two hundred thousand dollars. Right, and these, these are these are a burning designs. Correct. They started off as burning designs, but we enhanced them. This is the preamp, our flagship preamp. It's fifty-seven. This is our new DAC, which we didn't Which I to. would encourage you to listen to. Because and oh, these are yeah. Z40s um, configured for monoblock, and they're 6,800 each. Okay, 6,800 each, and the preamp is? It's 57.50. Okay, 612. So, like, for under 20K, you got all your electronics so, taken care of. So, exactly. The cartridge is more expensive than all the right, electronics. Right, that's right. Which is the way it's supposed to be. Well, and there are car yeah, and there are cartridges like that more expensive than a Revox B77. That's 16,000 for a tape deck. But you know what? There are more records to play than tapes. And no, not only that. It would actually sound better than a tape at some points. I don't know about better, but hopefully it'll sound as good as the tape. <laughs> it should sound better. Yeah, I mean, okay. Thank you. Tell you. Okay, now you're getting into hype territory. Thank you, yes, Dr. Milo. Okay, I'm right, bye bye. Thank you. Interesting products at this show. This looks like a couch, but it's actually a full range loudspeaker. And you sit in it and get you get actually get surround sound, you get Dolby Atmos out of this couch. It looks like a couch. And I'm moving it up to a room and there's gonna be a demo in about a half an hour. So it looks like uh, VPI will, will sell you their new Model 1 turntable, if that's what this is. I think it is. They'll sell it with, you can spy it without an arm and put your own arm on it? They will sell it without a, an arm and they can pre-drill the arm board for it. And now that they've got the specifications of this arm, they can pre-drill it for this arm. That's great. I think this is going to be a very successful table for I think it will be. It will be. It sounds fabulous. Um, it's got suspension that's very easy to set up. And, uh, and it works with anything. It's all the problems. Oh. And I'm working with Simon has already, has already incorporated a lot of changes since the first prototype at Pacific Audio Fest. This is a second prototype. Wow. There will be a couple more changes, then it will be final. And if you look at how the arm is set up now, it's got its own, you don't need a lock because it's got its own incorporated lock. He designed a wonderful lift that is so smooth. Wow. You know, so it is a lot better now. We are going to improve the mounting system, make it easier to install. Because Harry installed the one on the Forever Model 1. Right. And he complained all day. <laughs> But we will we will get that because it is it, it is it is complicated to actually install it. But uh, we will get it done. And what is what is this one I'm going to sell for when it's done? I have no idea. But it's not going to be too bad. It's not going to be. It's not going to be one of those. Crazy I love arms. what it looks like. I, it's not I going to be one it. of those crazy arms. Yeah. You can align. You can change alignment there. You see the, the lines there? Yeah. What it does is that I can adjust, I can do fine adjustments of alignment up here as well on your cartridge. So alignment, the balance, balance, anti-skate, everything is adjustable on this one. So it's, it's, it's getting there. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, that's very exciting. The, the arm is, sounds fabulous. I, I'm sure it does. 
and you have a lag. You're playing a, an acetate, so that, that's yes. not, that's not fair. This this was um, the recording that I made at the Pacific the first Pacific Audio Fest. All right. I hired the band for the audio. Yes, files, I remember that. And we recorded them. Yes. Two mics direct right. into a number five. You, but you never released it, right? It will be released next year. It's taken us this long to get the mastering done wow. and everything. The pressing was a nightmare because I wanted a one step and yeah. I wanted it on my special vinyl. Right. You know, so finally it's going to be pressed at. Um, it's going. To, the lacquers will be done at Paramount, and the uh, and the pressing will be done at Fidelity. So oh. we finally got things got things All right. So it will be released. Soon. Sounds good. Sounds good here. It sounds great. This is a new. This is a new Revox here. This is the Mark II Revox. This is the yellow Revox. So the new Mark III will have additional electronic upgrades beyond this, but it still has got all the old motors, the the, the really Pap good motors. motors. Yeah, the Pap motors. Pap motors. And then underneath this gate will be high AC and AB switch and flux density of 325 14. And on the back will have the XLRs for the professional electronics and your zero and plus 60 D that's outstanding, and it's, it's just not expensive either. No, I mean that's the problem, Gary. You can get yeah. this for sixteen thousand dollars, and the cartridge is twenty thousand no, dollars. What world is this? Gary, what world yeah. is this? That's but the, that's today before yeah. the twenty percent. Yeah. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know. But the the cartridge is eighteen thousand because we put in everything. I know. I'm you I'm only. Of you don't have to defend but it to me. But we have learned so much on this. We can now do a cheaper cartridge. All right. So you need to do the flagship in order to do. That's right. The, the trickle. Down. I, I completely understand. And ne never any reason to apologize for the price of any of this high end stuff because yeah. how many people are going to be buying it? How many people are going to afford it? How many can you make? It's perfectly fine. But this is a deal though, for what this yeah. costs. This is a deal. The Revox is a deal. Yeah. And it's the same factory that's never changed in yeah. 75 years. And what were they doing all this time? They were making a home theater and multi room products. I see. So they've never gone away. And they could come right back and do this. Yeah, there you are. The, 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 the tool, the tool. They've, had to, they've had to service the 36s, A77s, right, right. they have all the parts. Oh, wow. Nothing's left. That's and awesome. One of, the, one of the interesting things that not too many people know is that the laws in Switzerland, when a, when a product goes out of production, you must have 25 years wow. of spare parts available. I'll tell you the law I just learned. This is a brand new microphone, and I had it upside down. But I still think it'll pick up, it picked up okay. <laughs> okay, we'll find it. In the system that we're running right now, these are the Odeon Semper speakers, the second to the top of the line. What's we're the brand? Odeon. Okay, where are these made? Germany. Okay. Then we've got the uh, fairly new, integrated from Western Electric, the 91E. It's running three, 300Bs, 20 watts a channel. Okay. We're pushing it through the uh, airtight uh, step-up transformer. This is the entry Benny Audio. I think you may have seen the other Benny Audio. Sure, yeah. This, is, this one runs around 17,000 with a plain finish and about 18,000 yeah. with the wood Very finish. Nice. Uh, all done in pretty much in-house. And we're running a Joe 8, which you're familiar with, yep. uh, on it for the cartridge. And the Santa means you're giving the system away to somebody who comes in the room? Um, I, I don't know. You'd have to ask Miras on that because okay. he put it there, so I didn't quite understand if that's what he was doing. But I thought it'd be a great gesture. Idea. Yeah. And and this is uh, it's not Santa. It's a cat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Same thing. And this yeah. is the, this is the Western Electric. Forum. Yes, it is. Yeah, oh. Beautiful system. And this this retails for fifteen thousand. Oh. It's moving magnet and moving coil. Or yes, it? it is. Both of them. But you're that. using a step up with it right now. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Fair enough. Okay. Okay, Jeff, so you, so this is your room as well? This is also our room. You know, we have our democracy room where we got our 1980s uh, theme in right. this room. Uh, so we went for something, you know, that's, that's tangible, affordable, and still sounds uh, great. Right, you've been in here four times already. Four times. Okay, that's good. So what do we got here? So the speakers are the Martin Oscar Duos. It's a two-way with ceramic drivers. Okay. 8,000 a pair. Um, this is their starter line. Behind us, we were we go up 
Next level. They, they make speakers. What's the top? Where do we top out on the Martins? Six hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. Oh, 500, oh I, know. I, I know. Yeah, I mean they. So that, that's what we're using for our transducers here. And uh, how low do these go? So low. 37. What? 30, 37. 37. That's good. And what's the efficiency? Ported. 86. 86. 86. You need a little bit of little guts to drive them. So we're powering them with the 120 watt Diablo 120. Uh, for power conditioning and cables, we're using transparent, super level cables. Okay, so that's this, a Diablo integrated? That's the 120 integrated. Okay. What does that cost? Class AB. That is 14,000. 42K? 14, 1.4. One oh, one no, 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 we're not, we're not going crazy oh, in this room. I didn't know those guys did, went that low. Yeah, okay, this I is asked. a class, class AB I'm product. I asked. Yeah, uh, we're using an optional DAC module in there. We're using an Arender A15 just as a server here. Okay. Um, the turntable is a soda, sapphire, with the suspension. So and you've we, got an Aorus arm on there. There's an Aorus arm on there. That's a cool arm. It's so f affordable, but because we're doing the uh, suspension like this, you can actually go like this and not, you know, have I, any issues. I brought a hammer with me. Well, you know, I could do that. And you know what? Every turntable's a nail when you have a hammer. And you know what? If I do that, yeah, I still have issues. Well, we'll let's but see. We don't talk about no, my no, no. We'll see. We'll see. But you know, some things can be solved in an audio room, and some yeah. issues can't. Yeah, that, that's a smart arm to to, to, to use. Yeah, I, I, now, I use, I've reviewed their their turntable with yeah. them. It's, it's really good. But we don't we don't talk about the, the cartridge is a little pricey for the system, but it works out really and well. That's an which? Atis malachite cartridge. Okay. Silver plated uh, copper wiring. Uh, composite stone body. And you're using the Sutherland? The, the Sutherland TZ Vibe, the trans impedance current mode. Is that a new one? PZ? That is new. That's their entry level. And you'll hear it's super dynamic and rich. Okay. But like any of these types of uh, phono stages, you have to match them properly. Yeah. So the KC Vibe is their entry level okay. regular phono stage. Nice. TZ Vibe. Yep. Um, so, you know, it's all designed to something you could actually put in your living room right. or a small listening area, but really feel it. We, we really went for musicality yeah. in this room. Okay, and what, and what does this whole rig sell for about? I didn't add it up. Okay, uh, I'll add it up. All right. What is the table? I'm only an engineer. And the table? The table is six. And that is the, which model it's is it? It's the Soda Sapphire. Sapphire. Oh boy, it's a venerable design. Yeah, it's been around, I think this is the seventh iteration. Yeah, so this is a flex. But you know, a lot of diff changes to the sub platter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, get some engineers really working on it, a less, little less tweaky and more right. reproducible. More reproducible, so they can make more than one. They okay. can make more than one That's that good. sounds alike. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting proposition. Okay, well, I'm going to play a record now. Let's do it. All right, so here with Luca. Ch is that right? You pronounce it Luca? Yes, correct. Luca, Luca Chesky. You're David's son. I've heard correct. a lot about you. Yeah. None of it's been good, but <laughs> I, I don't let the. I came in the room anyway. So this is a loudspeaker you designed. Correct. And this is your first attempt at doing this. It's your yes. first product. Yes. And how long has this been under development? Uh, about six months right now. And how did you how did you start? What 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 was your impetus for doing this? So uh, I went to go study at the Princeton Audio's 3D. Uh, 3D Audio and Applied Acoustics Lab under oh, Professor uh, Edgar Schwery, who yes. is here with the Bach filters. Yes. Um, and place from that, exactly. From that, um, you know, I've always had a big passion for audio, and I've grown up as a musician. So really going there, I really got to refine and really understand the technical side of things. Yeah. Now with that, uh, we were working on a project at the lab, but in my free time, I really wanted to create something. You know, my goal when I went there to study was to use the information that I learned to create some kind of product. Now, with that, um, I created my Mark I, as I say, and uh, eight different prototypes later, we're here with the LC1 uh, bookshelf monitor. Um, so yeah, that's really how I got started with this. And uh, this is my first show here at the Capital Audio Fest. A good place to start. Yeah. It's, it's, where, it's where a lot of entrepreneurs get started. A lot of the big guys don't show up at this show. Yeah. So it's, it's a good place to start. Now, now let's see what you got here. So, so you, uh, where, so, where's the cabinet manufactured? So it's manufactured in my house in New York City. You make these cabinets? Are you a cabinet maker also? I make everything here but the drivers. So all of these are built by hand by me. So the cool thing about the LC1 is it uses a new kind of cabinet technology that I developed. Now, what that is, it's a multi-layer, high-density cabinet. So, basically to break that down, before we reach the internal section of the cabinet, there are going to be three different layers of material. 
Now with that we have uh, inner and outer shell of PLA plastic and then on the inside um, we have a high density polymer that essentially encases the whole internal cabinet. Now what do we get from that? We get a cabinet with an extremely low resonance. It's also very, very dead and very, very, very inert. Now with that, you can that's get... That's what people say about me, so that's fine. <laughs> okay, so... Now with that, you can get a cabinet that essentially allows the speaker to disappear. Now in addition to this, we have a woofer and tweeter really squeezed together due to the small form factor of this cabinet. Right. Now with that, you get close to perfect impulse response, almost similar to uh, a concentric driver. Now due to that, you get really good imaging. So the combination of those two allow for a really seamless listening experience. And these speakers will effectively disappear. So you've got you've got a, a six inch woofer that is six and a half inch polypropylene uh, mid base uh, and base cone and then a one and eighth inch uh, and what's on the side radiator. here passive we have radiator? two eight inch passive radiators okay so that's how you're getting your low frequency response right. I'm sorry I kicked your thing there. no worries right. no so you make these cap you you have a woodworking shop or you have a, a, a woodworking shop so there's actually no wood in this okay, okay so the material. You, you buy the material, yes. you have it cut to your to spec. Not even. So this uses the latest 3D technology to print. So think of it like this. The outer cabinet and inner cabinet is all one piece. So this is a very, oh. very structurally sound cabinet. Oh. Um, and then the inside gets filled with this polymer that I created. So, and from so that- you have, I'm sorry for interrupting mm -hmm. you, but so you have a 3D printing device yes. at home. Correct. So right now, that's how I've been making the uh, first uh, units of the LC1. Uh, hopefully, uh, after the show, if I you know get a couple orders in scale, we'll yeah. you know move to a larger place. And what are you uh, selling these for? These are going to be four ninety eight each, nine ninety eight for the pair. A thousand dollars a pair. Yes. That's pretty amazing. Now, do you, do you explain the source of these drivers, or you don't want to keep that keep, private? Yeah, that's, keep that private. That's private. Okay, and that's a that's a what kind of tweeter is that? It's a cloth dome tweeter or a silk dome? Silk dome, yeah. Okay. So yeah, another great uh, fact about uh, the crossover in this is it's all first order, right. and um, they're built by hand. So we use no pro. Well, I use no printed circuit boards, and I use Kimber internal wiring. Okay. So we have high resolution wire inside the cabinet. And there's probably not a lot of it because there's not a lot of space there. Right. The cabinet, the internal cabinet, is under one cubic foot. All right. And you're driving this with a. Uh, We're Mi using Mi the Tech. newest MyTech Ganfet amplifier. Yes. And their MyTech Manhattan DAC. Right. If you go to my website, I did an interview with him in Poland. Oh, nice. Last week, and he explains the amplifier and the technology, mm -hmm. and he's going to get me a pair to listen to because I'm really curious to hear how they sound. But I'm going to hear how you're and what ca you're using. What kind of speaker cables? Here? Mogami. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, now you're going to play me some music. Is it going to be your father's music or? Uh, no, it's <laughs> going to be uh, uh, the first track I'm going to play. <laughs> the first track I'm going to play for you guys is Oscar Peterson's "You'll Never Know." Okay, which I think we all think we all know that. And are you a vinyl kid or are you not? Uh, no, I'm no. not. Well, what's pro what's your problem? That's a problem <laughs> for me. But okay, I'll I'll forgive that and sit down and listen. Yeah, this is Jake Forsyth with Air Acoustics, and uh, we're showing off our new PX8 Phono preamp in our suite 319 here at the Capital Audio Fest. And we're really excited because it's our first phono stage to launch in some years, and there's some really, really cool features on it, aside from featuring our fully balanced and zero feedback circuit topology. We have, uh, this is our first product to feature uh, electronic gain and load setting changes and it also has two unique options that you can be loaded into it so you have the ability to add an optional DS audio photo optical cartridge input and it also has an optional A to D circuit output so you can archive your vinyl rip it to digital and it's uh, one of the first uh, boxes, to my knowledge, that you can digitize and archive the DS Audio photo optical playback in one unit. So, okay. uh, to, it comes standard with two separate discrete inputs, so you can have separate gain and load setting changes for that tone arm enthusiast out there for each input. And uh, yeah, with those options, it gives you 
a plethora of flexibility on how you want to run your vinyl rig. Which unit is it there? It is right underneath the uh, Rega Naya and the, the power supply. Oh, okay. And this is your this is your first new phone for you for a long time, isn't it? It is. It's the successor to our P5 XE phono preamp. But many, many gain and load setting changes to be had on here. Uh, it's it's going to work for moving coil, moving magnet, and DS audio optical cartridges. Great. And, and when do you expect to have this ready? Shipping next month, uh, end of December. And what is it going to cost? Re, uh, base price is $6,500. And uh, the, with the two options fully loaded, it gets up to 11000 So an additional 2000 for the A to D or 2500 for the photo optical inputs. Okay, and is that the Art 1000X? This is the Art 1000X from Audio Technica. See, that's my job is to know this. So, uh, so Angie's uh, American Sound in Canada is now bringing in the PE Perpetuum Ebner turntables, which is a, which is a storied brand from way back that they're now they've relaunched, and you're bringing them in, and this is the top of the line one right here. This is actually the middle. Middle of the line. Uh, so the China, yeah. PE4040. There's five different models. Okay. And uh, this is more or less in the middle, and that uh, is with the Ortofon Quintet cartridge, which is one recommended for this table. Okay. They like the Ortofon combination. Yep. And this would retail for about. Seven and a half thousand dollars. Okay. The turntable line starts at about thirty-eight hundred dollars retail to twelve thousand, and the twelve thousand one is the only one that's direct drive. The rest of them are all belt driven. Okay. And they're all asynchronous, and they have different tone arms on them. Okay, so let's um, let's go run through the line now. Okay. So this is the big one, the seventy seventy Mark II. This is a direct drive. Correct. Okay, and the arm is more substantial, I can see, even in the dark. And this one costs how much? This one will retail for $12,000. Okay. Very handsome looking turntable. All right, and then this one is the bottom and of the line? This is where they start. And um, as I said, there's five models. This one, um, the four models are all belt drive until you get to the top of the line. Right. So you'll see they're all made in Germany. I can show you. You saw the suspension, the sub chassis there. Yeah. It's locked down with these three screws that get removed. Okay. Nice, nice aluminum uh, sub platter. Yeah. On this particular model it is supplied with an Ortofon bronze cartridge. Okay. Uh, some models do come with cartridges, some are optional, okay. as would the top of the line there. Right. And there's a list of the other models that are available. And this is the drive on the 7070. Okay. And these are all made in Germany, they're not? All made in Germany. So that. these are the glands tone arms, this yep. is one? This is one of their 12 inch, of which they have two models. Are these made in Japan? They're made in Japan, designed in Japan, and have great legacy. Very solid, well damped tone arms. And what does this one cost, for for example? Uh, this one's approximately $12,000. Okay. And then they have a bigger brother, which is about eighteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Okay. And they start at about four and a half thousand. Oh, so there's a whole, how many are there? There's a total of, I believe it's six. Okay. Because they also have 10 inch. So there's two 9 inch, two 10 inch, and two 12 inch. There you go, six. Okay. And that's it, correct? That's correct. This is Synthesis made in Italy. Okay. And I'm launching this for North America. Uh, they have several different models in integrated, three different series. They also have mono amp, uh, which you saw next door in the avant garde room. Yep. And we're driving here uh, the system with one of the integrateds. They range in price from $3,900, which oh. is the little guy there oh. with the red face plate. Wait, let's look at that. That's cute. Yeah, and it's 25 watts per channel. What are the EL34s? Yes, 
that See, they I'm smart. Have, I know what I'm talking about. They, oh, okay. They also have KT88s, and they're going to be introducing a 300B. How long uh, has this company integrated. been in business? I've never About heard. 25 years. I've never heard of it. Yeah. It's just crazy how much stuff there is. This is Phasemation down here. Of course. That's yeah. just there to show. Yeah. And this is the amp that we're that we're listening to right now. And this is another one of these. This is the A50 Taurus. And this is an integrated amplifier. Okay, how much does this cost? That one is ten thousand dollars retail. Okay, I think we've seen the whole room now. And the rhythm a pair of rhythm speakers. Are these the ones you had in Warsaw? No, the Warsaw was the next model up. These oh, okay. are one down called the Trishnas, and they are $12,000 a pair. Okay, now we're in the Overture Audio Room, and they've got themselves a, uh, a Technics. Yeah, there is a uh, Clear Audio Performance DC. And this must be a Montana. This is one that I reviewed. It's a really good turntable. And here we have a hurricane, like a hurricane, with two arms on it. Lyra Cleos. Can't go wrong with that. And the Van den Crimson Stradivarius. Okay. And yes, they're both TA2000 Okay. How does it sound? Any good? I think so. I enjoy my one, well, yeah. I think it's pretty darn good. And using a Sutherland... Uh, Sutherland 2020 with the LPS, so we're using the linear power squad. Definitely found it makes a difference. Okay. And then uh, we're using the Warner N200. And then the MSB Discrete Deck uh, okay. down below. And that actually is the acoustic signature power supply. Right. There. And this is a this is a power conditioning. Uh, That's the Gemini 8 from Shinyana, and it also has um, a, a light version, if you will, of their Altera grounding. The system. grounding system, which so is so we actually we actually have all the components connecting it. So the idea is kind of create a universal. Yep. And what speakers are these? Uh, these are the Estelon Auras. Well, these are the small. small? These are the, yep. These are yeah. the basic ones. Yep. Finished yeah. in finished in black. And what do these cost? Uh, these are twenty two. Okay. Yep, 22. And then we have all Shinyata Theta. So we have all the new Shinyata uh, Theta cables that are here. Okay. So this is really a mod, in, in our big world of hi fi, this is a moderately priced, modestly priced. That's so ironic, because that was kind of our goal. So but we still, when we audited it all up, it was still about 110,000. 110,000, oh my God. <laughs> well, just so cool. take the cables away and it's 50,000. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's, good point. Yeah, but it, it's interesting, because that was kind of our goal. Yeah, we usually yeah. do. You know, last year it was somewhere around 300 and something, so we wanted to scale it back, but we yeah. also, we, we specifically wanted to do the Estelon Auras, so we really had to have product that was commensurate to make sure we got it. Yeah. You know, and you know what else? It's a hi-fi show. It's it's like you go to the car show. What are you looking at? You're not looking at the Toyotas. You're looking at the Ferraris. Yes, and, that's and exactly And people right. can scale down from this in their own heads or whatever else that's they have correct. to do with it, right? No, that's right. I mean, you don't need two tone arms. Uh, right. Uh, and you, you can get a smaller acoustic signature if you need correct. to. This, they're all good. You get the Maximus Neo or the Verona. Yeah, that yeah. would bring down your price. Exactly. Um, you don't necessarily, maybe you don't want a $22,000 Integrated. Well, you do want it, but you, you want it, but yes, yeah, exactly. Right. But that's. Uh, is your album sold out yet? Upstairs? I think uh, Robin still has some. Okay. I believe. I get it. It's I going it. fast though. It's great. I know. It's something. I know. It I'm is. playing it around, and people are just people. Uh, in summers, they ran out of the door yes, and went upstairs to get. Well, last year's was great. I missed out last yeah, year. So there's yeah, still yeah, some of those. I think Chad still has a few. Okay. Okay. It's not totally sold out, but this that's one we're gonna keep. We got four thousand pressed. We're gonna go through all four thousand, and we'll press. We'll keep pressing this one. And, and are you a baby Bellison? Is it, can I call you? That, a... Yes, Radiance is just like me. I'm a baby Bellison, and Radiance is the only pretty much difference is this one only takes a singular tone arm, whereas you know Brilliance has dual input. But um, this one is half the price, so it's kind of a, a good entry level. Like, and so the price is how much? It's thirty five hundred, thirty two fifty, and we are doing a show special for twenty nine twenty five. Okay, by the time this runs, it'll be too late for the show special. <laughs> but so it's, it's like four K about. But you know, we're, we're, we have grace, we have discounts, right. and yeah, I think it's a great entry level like kind of like a phono stage. Don't give my so, a discount. That, that <laughs> so it's so it's so it's, it's Wi Fi enabled, so you can yeah, use an app to uh, the uh, same to, moving coil and moving magnet as the oh, as a big one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it has the same kind of. Component, same noise, silent okay. noise floor. But, uh, um, single ended input and output? Yep. yep. 
And yeah, you got the and Wi-Fi remote that you introduced yeah. in your in your. Other yeah, and it's compact, and and, <laughs> and the Wi-Fi remote controls everything. And it matches everything. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> okay, and it sounds good because I just heard it. It does okay. sound good. So thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> So this is a turntable Brickman, right? With DS audio cartridge. It's a zero zero one or oh, zero zero two. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Slightly older one. Okay. Yeah, slightly old. Yeah. And it's supposed to run uh, two phono stages equalizers. It's the oldest version. This is the newest version. It has DS input. Oh, so you're doing your own DS decoding? Yes. Oh, okay. MC1, MC2, and MM cartridge. And also it has a mute button, mono button, and also it has adjustable output, oh. 24 dBs. Oh. And also subsonic filter, of course. And also if you go to... Uh, so there's our RAA. Okay, and do you actually show the, cur the DS curve that you're yes. using? You do? Yes. Let's see it. Yes, but this is a line, it's a little right, bit different. Right, right. And also you have a Columbia, if you have Columbia knob, or oh, oh. And EMI. Excellent. Yeah, because, but you know, if you have like old records. Real old ones, not, real not, ones. not new ones. No, no yeah, no. real old ones, yeah. right. So it could help you to correct it a little bit. Sure. And um, uh, from phono stage, it goes to preamplifier. Right. This is preamp. Yeah, this is a preamp. It's a dual mono input through output, balanced. And what does this cost? This, this, this. Which one? The the, the phono preamp. This one is nineteen thousand. Okay. This is a twelve thousand. And that is what? That's a, that's a power supply. No, this is a also separate uh, equalizer for DS. Oh. It has DS input. MM and MC, it has only three in. So it's a different product, it's totally. It's different. Oh, okay. But it's the same company. This company is Alexus Audio. And also has variable output. Okay. And MM and... Uh, and it runs off a battery. Yeah, it runs from oh, battery. Okay. You always know the uh, voltage on a battery. When voltage goes down to 10 volts, the power supply is on in charging battery. I see. Very simple. And where is this made? It's made in Brooklyn. A lot of empty tables. Okay, and and your name is Robin Wyatt. I've heard of. I have. You have a reputation to uphold. I do. Yes. <laughs> okay, Robin. So why don't you why don't you show me what you got in this in this room? Sure. Okay. Let's start at the very end of the chain. Okay. The Quad 2912 Electrostatics, uh, made in China now, but made to much higher standards with new panels and new protection circuits. They played louder. Uh, and more dynamically than any quad has ever played. Uh, and in my opinion, having owned quads all throughout my life, the best quad ever to leave the factory. Wow, and they're yeah. re reliable? Uh, so far, they, they, I've had these a year, not a single issue. They come with a three year warranty now. And uh, the price was reduced from 18,000 um, a few years ago because we bring them in by ship now, they're only $12,000. So somewhat of oh. a hi-fi bargain. Yeah. How, uh, how low do they go? Um, about 32. Really? Yes. So, okay, you, you could add a silver, but just to get that last... You could if you, you know. wanted to, but yeah. why would you? It's a perfect speaker. It's the most coherent and transparent speaker ever made because it's a, a, the diaphragm is 900 square inches of basically the thinnest two micron mylar. It's it's just it's very hard to improve on it by adding a sub or anything else. Okay, and so is it is it powered? It has to be powered. No, it have to be plugged into the wall. You can turn them on and off. It's not like the original quads that they need juice all the time. You yeah. can turn these on and off, and they come instantly to life. Okay.
Well, what else we got here? Okay, so they've been driven by uh, a New Zealand-made Java Hi-Fi double-shot carbon addition integrated amplifier. So it's called the double shot because it's balanced. That means it puts out 400 watts from its gallium nitrate FET class D output stage. It has a, light, a LDR, light emitting diode right. preamplifier. It has a built-in USB DAC, a built-in moving magnet phono stage. It has Bluetooth for the wife and kids. Uh, it also has balanced inputs and outputs for a subwoofer. And what does that cost? Uh, so just under 17000 Okay. Um, so we're like a $35,000 for the two right now. Yes, okay. exactly. And then we get in uh, the music streamer underneath uh, is the Sonore Signature Rendu. It's connected to the network via optical cable, so there's no um, copper connection. Okay. Uh, it's just a wonderful streamer. Use it with Rune, Audio Varna, whatever you want. And use it on your phone. Yes, okay. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, next to it, you'll see the Rabia Audio Step Up Transformer. It's going to be a new product I'm bringing out in early 25. Um, it, that's a 1 in 20, but you can pull those out and plug in a balanced step up or a step up that's configured specifically for your cartridge's impedance. And it's like a tube socket. Yes, exactly. We're using tube sockets to make that process easier. So you keep the same box and you can switch in and out. And Ooh. that's going to be under $1,000. It'll probably wow. be nine fifty. Wow. So a, definitely a new price point for something of that quality. Okay. And I'm, it's, what's funny, I'm using it with a $10,000 cartridge. I don't find that funny at all. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, well, what else we got? Okay, so um, that's being fed by the Zar DST on the end of the tone arm. That is uh, made in Siberia. Um, I bring them in from Russia. They, it is an exact copy of the Neumann DST-62, a revered, long gone, but not forgotten phono cartridge. Um, it's kind of specialist. It tracks at six grams, so it needs retipping every 600 hours. But it's reasonably priced to retip, not like most moving coils. Uh, it's one of those things, once you've heard it, it's really hard to go back to anything else. It has more dynamics and slam than any cartridge on the market. And um, what does it cost? That is a $10,000 version. Oh. He also has a walnut and brass version, which is 11000 oh, Okay. That is mounted on the Bird of Prey I import from Thailand, a bespoke, magnetically stabilized, viscous damped unipivot that ha can come with a 10-inch, 12-inch, 16-inch or 18-inch tone arm wand. It comes with uh, the straight wand you see, as well as a J wand with an SME co collet for SPUs and head shells. Um, we can make it an SPU G or A geometry. Um, it can come balanced, single-ended or even field coil wired. The effective mass of the tone arm is variable from 14 grams to 52 grams. Whoa. Yes, so it'll track anything. Um, between the magnetically stabilized uh, bearing and the viscous damping, it's the quietest, most dynamic and powerful tone arm I've ever owned. I believe Mr. Michael Fremer may be getting one sometime next year to listen to. Well, uh, I'll tell him. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then that is uh, tracking on a VPI Direct Drive RA for Roundabout or Rebired Audio. It's a collaboration between myself and Matt Weisfield at VPI. Um, VPI very kindly lets me use their Direct Drive platform to make unique, one-of-a-kind bespoke turntables for customers that are looking for something very different but sonically brilliant, which is what the VPI Direct Drive does. Who needs a plinth? Exactly. Seriously. But I do make them with plinths as well. If you want it, yeah. uh, The mat on top is the a reproduction of the Micro Secchi CU180 gum metal mat from the 70s. Long gone, not forgotten. This is an exact replica. Uh, they're made in Holland, and I'm the importer for that mat. It okay. improves every turntable I put it on. Okay. 
Um, all the cabling in the system is Finley Audio. I've been using them since they started their business six or seven years ago. Beautifully made, great sounding, get out of the way cables at a, a reasonable price. I mean, let's face it, there's a, a $75,000 power cable at this show today, and this whole system costs $75,000. Yeah, I saw $40,000. Cables. Yeah, there you go. And then the records in that beautiful stand, that record rack is made by Wax Racks in Brooklyn. It's just a nice piece of art and very nice to use and select your current record collection out of it because, as we know, none of us have that fewer records. Exactly. exactly. More records. And then you have, and then you have this, uh, this arm pod here and this VPI. Yes, that's a VPI arm pod that's made for this particular um, HWRA. And so what does this turntable cost without the arm? Uh, the turntable without the arm is 18000 oh, That's That's not bad at all nope. in this world. The tone arm is 16000 as I said, with the two arm ones of your choice oh. and uh, the cable. And the cartridge, as we mentioned, was ten. Nice. So it's basically a $40,000 turntable front end and 35000 for the rest. Right. Outstanding, Robin. Thank you so much. No, thank you, Michael. And, and Thanks for coming in. Unique.